Hi everyone, so we're going to be working through uh, Al Grosch's workbook, Developmental Math 2, Class Notes. This is section 1.1, Displaying Information and Vocabulary. So we're going to talk about tables and graphs right off the bat. If you have the workbook, this is page, well, I don't know because I don't have page numbers here, but you can find it there at the beginning of the book. All right, this is what we call a table here. A table is just a condensed way to write information down. It just makes it easier to understand the information instead of writing in a paragraph. You can use this kind of table with information to create a graph. And the first graph we're going to create is a bar graph right here. Uh, graphs have a horizontal axis called the x-axis, a vertical axis called the y-axis, um, we need to have some labels on these axes before we can put our information into it. So down here at the bottom, I'm just going to put some marks here that will indicate each movie title. So maybe the first movie is Shrek. The second movie is The Notebook. The third movie is, of course, Star Wars, one of my favorites. Happy Gilmore. Um... The Godfather, if you extend your axis out, you can fit the last movie on here, which would be Rocky. The y-axis vertically should indicate then dollar amounts. Um, I don't really have enough room to put all of this on here, so we'll start with um, the smallest dollar amount would be Happy Gilmore at about 40,000. So if we mark these in thousands, we'll put a K up here to indicate thousands, Happy Gilmore will have a bar that goes almost to 40,000. Okay? So um, the notebook would be 80,000 here, and we can make a bar for the notebook that goes almost up to 80,000. And you can see this is what a bar graph will look like when you make it. Of course, you could probably do it neater on your paper than I'm doing it here. So we took care of that one. Um, so if we're going by 40s, this should be about 120,000 here. Do we have anything that's about 120,000? Godfather was about 135,000. So that's going to be hmm, something like this. And the bars usually join together like that. So we could probably make this one a little wider. There we go. There we go. Okay. So that took care of the Godfather. We have Rocky being 117,000, which is going to be like right about here. Okay. What are we missing? Star Wars and Shrek, which are very high. So we could make a break and put Star Wars and Shrek way up here. Shrek was 268,000. Way up here. And Star Wars 461,000, which is going to be way up here. All right, so that's the basics of what a bar graph is. Uh, the next page we have create a line graph, which ha is a similar idea. It's just another way to you take information from a table and put it into a useful kind of graph. Um, so again, we're going to put the months down here on the x-axis. So we have January, June, September, and December. Uh, the vertical or the y-axis, we're going to put dollar amounts again. So what should these represent here? Let's see, maybe 500,000? These are going to be thousands, 500,000. So how many 500,000s would it be for January? Like this would be 1 million, 1.5 million, 2 million, 2.5 million. A line graph doesn't use bars. It uses dots to represent, of course, 6.5 million is going to be way up here. 
to represent the data where the data intersects the uh, the axes and nine million and then and then the the lines are connected the dots are connected with lines and that's the basics of a line graph. Most of you guys have probably seen graphs before like this. The question at the bottom says, why do we use tables and graphs? So what do you think? Why do we use tables and graphs? In my opinion, this is really just a convenient way. Tables and graphs are a convenient way to view information. If you were to open up a paper that stated all this information in paragraph form, it would take a lot longer for you to uh, to process the information. A table and a graph is just a a way for you to conveniently get the information that you need quickly. All right, so the next page has some vocabulary on it. This is just some basic math vocabulary. Uh, the word sum refers to addition. The word difference, of course, to subtraction. The word product means multiplication. Actually, this is the one that I usually see students having the most trouble with because the word product has a lot of different applications in the English language. It can mean a lot of different things. When we use it in math, we refer to uh, the answer to multiplication as the product. The word quotient is a result of division. And you can see some examples right there in your book. The quotient of 12 and 3 is 4. If you were to write this into a math sentence, the quotient means you're dividing. What are you dividing? You're dividing 12 divided by 3 and that will equal 4. Okay, so here's some uh, symbols for multiplication here. Um, the time sign is the one that you learned earliest when you started learning multiplication in third grade. The raised dot we used a lot in middle school. Uh, the parentheses, whenever you see parentheses right next to each other, this means 6 times 7. The division, uh, <clears throat> there is one other multiplication symbol, or it's actually not even a symbol, that isn't listed here, and that's um, writing letters and or numbers right next to each other with no symbols is multiplication. So, so that's another way to write multiplication. There's some division symbols here. The division sign, we don't use this a lot in algebra. Uh, we'll use it in order of operations. Long division, the box, and of course the fraction bar. Anytime we use a fraction bar, this means 18 divided by 2. So those are division, those are some symbols for multiplication and division. Uh, here we have some vocabulary that's used a lot in algebra. The word variables, you're going to hear uh, your instructor say the word variable a lot. A variable is just a letter that stands for a number, and it could be any letter. We use X a lot, we use Y a lot, A, B, C, any letter that just stands for a number is called a variable. An equation is a mathematical sentence that contains an equal sign. This, these are examples of equations. An equation must have an equal sign. An expression is something else we work with a lot. Here's a few examples of expressions. An expression has no equal sign. That's the major difference between an equation and an expression. Equations have equal signs, expressions do not. All right, in constructing tables, this is the beginning of translating to make a table for some information. Um, this is going to be an easy way for, to find, for us to find some general information. Here's another word problem for us. Movie tickets cost $8 each. How much will it cost to bring my friends to the movies? Well, there's a piece of information we don't have there, and that's how many friends are we bringing. So we're going to use the variable F to represent the friends, so we can make a general statement that no matter how many friends I have, maybe this week I have two friends, and next week I might have 12, um, I can still use the same table and the same equation or expression to figure out how much it's going to cost me. So we don't know the total cost. This is what we're looking for. So we're going to use the variable C to represent the total cost. So what will be the formula to represent this situation? So we're looking for C. So we're going to say C is going to be equal to um, each ticket cost $8. So it's going to be 8 times F or the number of friends I have. 
So this is the equation for this situation. The cost, which is represented by C, the cost the cost is equal to the number of friends F times eight, which is how much each ticket cost. So we're going to use this table here down here. See if we can, there we go, we can enlarge it a little bit, makes it easier to write in. If I have one friend, how much is it going to cost me? Well, if I substitute one for F, I have the cost is eight times one, which is eight. If I have two friends, then I substitute two for F, the cost will be eight times two, which is 16. If I have three friends, the cost will be 8 times 3, which is 24. And of course, we go down the list, but we can also skip around. If I have 10 friends, the cost will be 8 times 10, which is 80. If I have 20 friends, the cost will be 8 times 20, which is 160, and so on and so forth. So by writing a general statement, we can make a table that helps us figure out no matter how many friends we have, how much this is going to cost.